Welcome back guys to part five of the Construct Top Down series. Now today we're going to be focusing on animations. Uh, the reason why I want to make this part five of the animations is because we want to make this, you could say moving forward, the tutorial moving forward, exciting and sort of bring the game to life. So I want to start working with the assets and characters and enemies other than just the blocks so that you guys can see an actual top down come to life. Now. I suggest using open source assets. Uh, if you've got purchased assets or if you're a graphic designer yourself, please feel free to go ahead and make your assets. We're going to be using the 16 by 16 because this is a pixel based game example. Uh, this is essentially an open site you can have a look at called opengameart.org. I'll leave the link in the description down below. And there are hundreds of assets that the community has contributed in that you can go and use in your day to day games as well as little games that you're creating and demos and whatever it is that you want to use this for. Now you can also purchase assets at all the different uh, asset sites. I'll put a link down below as well for those that are quite keen to do that as well. Now we're going to be working on our player animation today. We're also going to be in the next few tutorials because this it was essentially going to be a 10 part series but it looks like we might have to push it to 15 or 20 because there's still so much we need to cover. We need to cover families and also the vital part is cleaning up the code, making use of functions, which is critical. So that we can call these, these functions, you know, on different event sheets as well as global variables. And then furthermore, uh, just better, better way of, of collectively grouping our, our events. Now we're going to focus now in today's video animation. So pretty pumped this way we bring this game to life and it makes it more exciting while we're working on it. So I've gone ahead and obviously downloaded some assets in terms of my character. And I want to begin sort of, you could say, setting the animations for our player. And that way we uh, can see this bad boy come to life. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on here, take a look at the behaviors I have. I've got this here, the eight directional behavior. I'm going to just change that to 80 because that's obviously a little bit quick when you're going to use assets. And then furthermore, I want to make sure that the set angle is actually turned off because we're going to use the simulating control so we don't want this to set the angle for us right so the next thing we need to do is create a new object and the new object really is the animation now a lot of you would want to there's two ways of doing this essentially you can bound the animation to the to the base you could say this object that we have in terms of player i like to make a separate one and then use the pin behavior the reason for this is that we can then work with the base in sort of a let's say a symmetrical uh, format in the sense that if we're having doors, etc., we can walk through easily without getting stuck. If for instance, there's a sword in the way or the assets too big, you know, the base is just a lot easier to work with and setting it to invisible than working with the, the base as the animation opposed to the base just being the base. Now this might sound confusing, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to add my first animation, which is going to be the idle animation. We want to make sure that something happens when we're not pushing any keys. The next one I want to add is the walk. The walk, rename this to the walk. Let's make this left and right because we're going to mirror that. Right, walk left and right, and then obviously the up and down. But let's work with this one now. So I'm going to go ahead and just check the loop. And then I'm going to pull my assets in. So I'm going to click on idle. Like I said, I've already downloaded some, which I'll share as well down below and i'm going to drop in my little idol right so drag that across put that in and there's my idol character now if i go ahead and play that you're going to see he's going to actually do something he's busy idling but obviously there's my base all right so what we need to do now is obviously just do the unchecking sort of because they're commenting out so we can just go toggle disable i don't want the player now to sort of focus on where the mouse cursor is i just want that to be in the keys so if we go ahead and play that now, we should just, the play itself should just move around like that. Okay, we'll get to that point. Right, so the next thing now is effectively to pin this player to that base. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a behavior to this object. So let's go ahead and click on behaviors. I'm gonna add the pin to behavior, right. And then we can add an event that basically says on layout system, on layout, should be down here, start of layout, let's say sprite, which I need to rename. So let's just rename that first. Rename this to player underscore animation. And then we'll keep that as player still, but maybe we'll just rename this as well to player base. So we know that that's the base. 
because it, it allows you'll see why this is quite critical it just allows us a lot more movability as well as when we're working with you could say attack animations and where the hit points are using the base uh, for certain functions and the animation to other functions is, is a lot better than having it all in one it just makes it a lot easier it also simplifies the code right so then let's go to the player animation and we, we've added the pin behavior stunning so now we can go to the event so we go yeah we're going to go player animation we want to basically pin it to an object and that object being our player base done let's go to the layout let's take a little character and let's center him right in the middle of this okay so we know he's there fantastic if i play it now he'll be on there and if i move it he will move along with it right so I'm moving now and the idle animation is playing, which is fantastic. So theoretically, yes, what we'll do here with the base so that you understand, we always set that to invisible. So we'll just set that to initially invisible. You can also do it on the event sheet, but let's save an event and there's our player, right. But that way, when the player's got different movement, you see the scale of it and so forth, we're still working with the 32 by 32 of the block size, which is nice if you're keeping the game tile at 32, but this is a 16 base asset, okay? Let's go ahead and close that. The next thing we need to do is add the other animations, the walk animations, because it looks rather funny in iBeam, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select the walk left and right. So we just double click that. We've created the animation and let's go drop in the walk animation. I'm going to now delete that. You only need the left hand side or the right because you can use the mirror function to change it. All right, so we can go ahead and obviously close that. Click back to our event sheet. Now we can basically set it. So when the W is pressing up, we don't have that one. We've got basically the right and the left. So let's simulate the right. So we know he's facing right now. So we can just go add action and we can go player animation, set the animation. And then yeah, we're going to select the walk. It should just pop up, but uh, take it. It's not going to pop up. Is it going to pop up for me? There it is. Awesome. Walk left and right and start from the beginning. Fantastic. Now let's run it. It'll be a bit weird now, but let's see it. So if I walk to left, right there, you can see he walks, but he's staying there now because that was the last known, obviously, call event that he thinks he needs to do. Then the next thing we need to do is obviously just copy that, paste that down, and let's do that on the simulating left as well. And here we're going to set the mirror function. So we're going to go play animation, set mirror, Set mirrored and we're going to say mirrored because we want to mirror to the other side. But now if we turn left, he's going to stay left, right? So he goes left, but if we go this way, he goes, but I can't go back now because he's now staying mirrored. Next thing is to obviously set the mirrored, yeah, to non-mirrored. So we're going to go play animation, set mirrored, and we're going to say not to mirrored. Okay, fantastic. Now we'll have an idle left and right but he stays this way, okay. Next important event to add is basically to check to make sure that the player base, which is keeping the movability, the behavior in terms of its movement, we wanna set that, to, we wanna check that basically to see that he's not walking. So we can go ahead and add an event and we can select a player base and we can compare the speed. We're gonna use is moving, is moving and we're gonna copy this here basically. We wanna set the animation to idle. So we tap idle, uh, it should have popped up, but there it is, idle. Let's set the idle, we're gonna say player, set animation to idle, but now this is checking to see that it's moving. So this will contradict everything you've done. So you need to invert this, invert that. Now what's gonna happen is he will idle, as you can see, he will walk left, he will walk right, and if I stop, he's gonna idle, and there he idles. Okay, so obviously up and down is not set, only the left and the right. Right, so let's go ahead and set the others. Now, you'll notice that I like to use states. In, in other words, we like to. what we're going to do here when we clean the code up, theoretically, is we're going to add a state, an instant variable, to this player. And then we're going to work with state so that we can keep all our animation code in one place. So that if, you know, the state equals walking, do the walking movement and so forth. This is just better ways of coding. But like I said, we're going to focus a dedicated video on taking events, tidying them up and using functionality that is going to be more global based functionality, giving us less events in our styles, in our sheet, as well as just making it lighter in terms of the compressed code when we want to export it for the, for the, for the platform of choice. Right, so let's go ahead back to the animation and let's add a new one and we're gonna add animation and let's rename this to the walk 
I would imagine the up animation or should we say the down? Let me just check and see which one I've got. So the walk down. So let's go ahead and walk, rename that to walk down. I still need to export the up, but I wanted to just give you the idea of, of what it is you need to do. And we can remove that. We can set the loop to looping it because we want it to continue to play. You can also slow the speed down if you want to, if you feel it's too fast. And then we're gonna say moving down. And then yes, we're going to copy this line and we're going to just put that there and we are going to say walk down. Stunning. So now we should have the left, right, down and idle. So there is idling, we've got the left, we've got the right and we've got the down. We don't have up because I still need to just export those assets. Well guys, so that is our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be focusing in the next one, the enemy animations. I'm going to show you how to change and set those. That's a lot different to the player because we're not dealing with the directions. We're using pathways and we need to stimulate where the angles are, etc. But we will be focusing on that so that we can set our animations accordingly and what the enemy does so that when they are facing in the different directions that they too are given the correct animation. I'm also just going to go ahead and add the up animation off line from this video so that in the next video that will also be set so that we have a full animation of walking and idling for our player. Then after that we're going to be attacking I would say in video 7 the attack animations for the player and then from there we will begin the enemy attack animations. That way we've got a good look and feel while we move forward and then we will begin to uh, start some of the AI movements that I've got in mind and then some sort of special effects to end off the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe down below. Also the like thumbs there, it always helps us. And we will catch you guys in the next one.